In this video, we're going to talk about the use of cone beam CT, image fusion, and needle guidance planning as it relates to a variety of different vascular procedures. Uh, this shows the interface and the eye guide planning station that is used to actually develop uh, a needle guidance path as shown in green uh, in the lower left panel. The planning steps include importing a priorly obtained CTA, uh, acquisition of cone beam CT in the hybrid room, fusion of these two images together. On the workstation we then plan the needle path, we confirm that needle path and then push that needle path onto the live fluoro system in which we're going to perform the procedure. We then create what's called the bullseye view which is used to target where the needle will be inserted in the patient. This is done using a laser built into the image guidance system. We use a needle stabilizer called a C-Star, which we'll show you. And then we advance an 18-gauge needle uh, to the target. Now we'll take you through these steps. First step, really, is in the acquisition of the cone beam CT. Think of the uh, C-arm, in this case the Siemens Zego, as a large single-plate CT detector. This rotation allows us to create a, a three-dimensional a DICOM data set. And we show you this in this reconstructable volume. So think of this as a truncated um, data set which is limited due to the size of the detector but it does allow us to actually fuse that area on the previously acquired CT scan. Uh, this is generally a bone-to-bone -bone fusion and once the fusion has occurred this allows us to uh, register the entire uh, previously acquired CT data set. These two data sets are then merged on the workstation and the two different colors of data are the uh, cone beam CT and the previously acquired CT scan and you really can align, a lot of this is done automatically, but you align both the bones and in this case the endograft uh, to make sure that there's ac accuracy of Im image fusion. And once that has been done, and these two images have been fused together, we can then switch really to planning mode. And, and again, we've started using uh, the wall calcification um, of an, a blood vessel to actually increase the accuracy of this. In the workstation, we then place a circular marker on the target, an X on the entry point in the skin, and this needle trajectory is then calculated. Uh, this tells us what the depth from the skin is, it tells us the depth after we enter an aneurysm, in this case for translumbar embolization, and this can be checked in multiple dimensions. It also tells you the optimal image intensifier angle. This is then pushed into the workstation. The first thing you do is have to register uh, the accuracy of the C-arm positioning, and that's by aligning these crosshairs in the middle of, the, of this diamond. Once that is done, uh, we then convert into what's called a bullseye view. That green circle is where the needle should be inserted, and we should be looking right down the trajectory of, of the needle. Um, this is just an example of how this has been used in the thigh. This is a venous malformation deep in the thigh, so we not only can use it for translumbar embolization, we can also use it in the thigh uh, to access things which are really not otherwise visible using ultrasound. Um, this was a venous malformation. You can see the calculation and the path in the background, and then we can inject this directly. Here's yet another example where we're actually using transcaval access to an anteriorly placed endoleak. That also helps you avoid the, um, the, the stent graft itself. Uh, moving on from this, um, had, this is a patient who we did access uh, using translumbar guidance for an enlarging aneurysm. The needle has been introduced into the aneurysm sac. We've injected dye. Now you can actually see the uh, left uh, uh, colic and the sigmoid cone branches and then once you get, get access like this then you simply go ahead and work uh, much like you do any other endovascular procedure. So this is, kind of, is what the trajectory looks like where we push the needle down. We're slightly off at the apex but otherwise this is a fairly safe way of gaining access into an aneurysm sac in a very controlled and stable manner. Again the bullseye view we use this thing called the C-Star, which helps stabilize the um, uh, the needle as it's being advanced, because it's very difficult to bend it once it's inside the patient. We use laser guidance. Once you're in the bullseye view, it shows you where to actually go ahead and insert. This is actually accessing a ventricular pseudoaneurysm directly. And we've also used it in other situations like th lung biopsies. Here we're actually localizing a lung nodule. This is what the workstation for the lung nodule actually look, looks like. We dropped an embolization coil into this, and the surgeon then took it out. So there are a variety of different applications for that. Cone beam CT is an enabling tool. It allows for very precise needle access into structures which cannot be otherwise visualized. And there's a value whenever direct vascular access is required, particularly if ultrasound is not possible. And there are many applications uh, in both general surgery and thoracic surgery where this may be of value. Thank you very much.